everyone welcome back to another video by simply learn in this video we will be discussing cognizant interview questions we'll go through different types of interview questions that are often asked during the interview process at cognizant so in this video first we will learn about cognizant then we'll understand cognizant recruitment process then we'll go through different interview rounds then we'll understand cognizant technical interview questions for freshers after that we'll learn about cognizant objective interview questions then HR interview question for freshers and many more topics like that. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update. So before moving ahead, let's understand about Cognizant. So Cognizant helps business streamline process, reimagine customer experiences and modernize technologies to keep up with the constant changes in business environments. Its technology offers the tools and flexibility necessary for each person to develop their best self. Whether changing the companies that the world relies on or helping you build your best self. In addition to information technology, security, consulting, IT and BPO, Cognizant also offers services in education and government. Cognizant has three key areas of focus, digital business, digital operations and digital systems and technology. So this was about Cognizant. Now let's understand Cognizant recruitment process. So Cognizant believes in employing people that are driven to succeed and go above and beyond to contribute significantly with their digital expertise. Their hiring method takes into account the fact that students have varying levels of IT experience. They are offered jobs depending on the skills and interest in technology. The process for freshers happens in two ways. That is on-campus recruitment, off-campus recruitment. The recruitment of experienced candidates take place through job portals like Nokri, Monster Jobs, LinkedIn, Indeed, employer referrals, etc. So this was the recruitment process. Now let's understand different interview rounds at Cognizant. Interview rounds are divided into first aptitude test, then technical interview, then HR interview. So first understand the aptitude test. So if you are a fresher, you must take the aptitude test first. Candidates can take the test on an online platform. Usually, freshers apply for the Gen C position in Cognizant. The Gen C interview questions are divided into the following. That is quantitative ability, then logical reasoning and English comprehension. While the experienced candidates have to take skill-based assessments. This test is based on previous experience and technologies. Now let's understand the technical interview round. So. Technical round is standard for freshers and experienced candidates. It is one of the crucial and difficult rounds in the entire process. The questions can vary from data structures, databases, system design, UI, AI, ML, etc. Now, moving on to HR interview questions. HR interview round, there is not that much to prepare. HR will usually check your attitude and organizational fitment. So that is what you need to prepare for that round. Now let's have a look at some cognizant technical interview question for freshers. So our first question is explain the concepts of pointers in C. So it is an important concept. So the answer would be a pointer is a variable that stores the address of another variable. It is used to point to the variables indirectly. It makes it possible to manipulate the values. So this is how you can answer this question. Now moving on to our second question, which is, can you explain memory leaks? So a memory leak occurs when object available in a heap are not utilized. The garbage collector fails to remove it from memory. Hence, these objects are kept in memory unnecessarily. Memory leaks can lead to performance issues and are bad for application's health. So this was the explanation of memory leaks. Now, our third question is, how does garbage collection work? So garbage collection is a very important concept as we all know. So garbage collection is the automatic memory management technique used in Java. To free up the memory, it locates items that are no longer needed by the program and deletes or removes them. There are various garbage collection algorithms used by a garbage collection system. 
now moving on to our fourth question that is explain the mark and sweep algorithm so the mark and sweep technique is known as tracing garbage collector because it traces out the whole collection of items that are either directly or indirectly accessible by the program it works in two phases so in the first phase the algorithm detects the unused objects in the memory while in the second phase these objects are removed from the memory to reclaim the wasted space the main drawback of the mark and sweep method is that regular program execution must be suspended while the garbage collection algorithm runs now moving on to the next question which is what is a dangling pointer so pointers that are not initialized with a valid address are called dangling pointers it occurs during the object destruction phase the object is destroyed by memory but the pointer's address is not changed so this is dangling pointer now moving on to the next question that is what is recursion so it is a very popular concept we all have heard about this so a recursion algorithm calls itself with smaller input values and returns the result for the current input by carrying out basic operations on the returned value for smaller input generally if a problem can be solved by applying solutions to smaller versions of the same problem and the smaller versions shrink to readily solvable instances then the problem can be solved using a recursive algorithm now coming to the next question which is what is a data type so a data type is a characteristic of the data it helps the machine understand how machine will use data in the code coming to the next question which is explain malloc function malloc function is used for memory allocation this function is used to allocate the memory dynamically and here's the example ptr equals cast type asterisk sign malloc byte size so this was malloc function now moving on to the next question which is can you explain a string so the string is a data type it is used to represent a sequence of characters so we'll now discuss in different languages how string is declared so in c++ language it is declared like this like string hello world in c language it is declared character str name size in java language it is similar to that of c++ language that is string hello world now in python it is hello world hi so you can declare string in different languages like c++ c java by different methods now moving on to our next question which is what is an integer so the integer is a data type it is used to represent numbers in c language it is used as int a then in c++ and java it is used as similar to that of c language then in python it is declared as a equals 10 that there is no data type we can see now coming to the next question which is what is an array so the array is a collection of similar elements stored in the continuous memory block the data stored in the memory can be accessed by index arrays are used to store a large amount of data in the memory this was array now coming to the next question which is what are the primitive data types so there are eight primitive data types in java these data types have no additional methods it only mentions the size and type of the variable's value and these primitive data types are byte short int long float double boolean character so these were some primitive data types in java now our next question is what is the difference between int and integer in java so let's start with int first so int is a primitive data type on the other hand integer is a wrapper class int has no additional methods whereas integer has additional methods and flexibility for storing and manipulating the data int is not a class but integers on the other hand is a class so this was a basic difference between int and integer now moving on to our next question which is what is a bootloader so the bootloader is an essential component in the booting process of the operating system 
It is also called the boot manager. It places the operating system in the memory. So next is explain the difference between interpreter and compiler. So let's start with the interpreter first. So interpreter translates one line of code at a time, whereas compiler scans the entire piece of code and converts it into machine code. Interpreter is faster than compiler in analyzing the program, whereas compiler is slower to analyze program, but the overall execution time of compilers is faster than interpreter. Interpreter are memory efficient, whereas compiler on the other hand are less memory efficient than interpreter. The examples of interpreter are Python and Ruby, and the examples for compilers are C and C++ Java. Now, coming to our next question, which is what is OOPS concept? So OOPS stands for Object Oriented Programming. It is about writing a code in functions and procedures. The idea is about reading the code in a minimalistic way that reuses code. The OOP follows abstraction, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. So this was the OOPS concept. Now moving to the next question, which is explain inheritance. So inheritance is the mechanism that allows one object to acquire all the characteristics and properties of another object. A class used for inheritance is called the base class or superclass, while the class that inherits is called a derived class or subclass. Like it can be understood from a simple example, like the son inherits all the properties and characteristics of his parents. And you can create multiple objects using template of parent objects. Now, coming to the next question, which is Explain encapsulation. So encapsulation is used to protect the data from the outside world. Encapsulation means shielding the data. It is done by wrapping it under a single program or function. The data in an encapsulated class is hidden from other classes by making the data private in nature. So this was encapsulation. Now moving on to the next OOPS concept that is explain polymorphism. So polymorphism means taking multiple forms. The object in the program can act in different ways depending on the message or the event occurring. A very good example of polymorphism is that a man can have different roles like father, son or uncle, yet he is the same person. Polymorphism also means many forms. So now coming to the next question, which is what is a constructor? So the constructor is used to initialize the object. It is similar to the method. Every time a class is instantiated, constructor is used for it. During the instantiation, the memory required for the object is allocated. There are two types of constructors in Java that is default constructor and parameterized constructor. Now coming to the next question, which is explain destructor. So a destructor is used to destroy the objects that are created while the class was instantiated. It is a special method that gets called when the object life cycles comes to an end. It can remove the object from the memory and reclaim the space. The destructor also releases any locks held by the object and closes the database connections. Now coming to the next question, which is what is constructor overriding? So an answer of this question would be you cannot override a constructor in Java. The constructor is similar to a method but it does not work like a Java method. If you try to call a superclass constructed in a subclass, the compiler treats it as a method and will throw a compilation error. Now coming to the next question, which is what is constructor overloading? So constructor overloading can be defined as having multiple constructors with different parameters so that every constructor can perform a different activity. In Java, these constructors must have unique signatures and for error-free compilation, different sets of arguments must be passed to these constructors. So here we can see an example. So in this example, we are creating two objects of a class, one with zero parameters and another with one parameter. So when we create an object, constructor of class gets called. Here we have two constructors, one with no arguments and other with one argument. Creation of person one object will call person constructor and person two object will call person int constructor. This is constructor overloading. 
So this is a fine example of constructor overloading. So as we have understood now what is constructor overloading, now we can move to the next topic which is explain virtual functions. So a virtual function is a member function that is declared in the base class and it is overridden by the derived class. So virtual function helps in achieving runtime polymorphisms. Rules to keep in mind for virtual functions are it cannot be static. Then it should be accessed using a pointer for reference to the base class. Then third would be a class can have virtual destructor but not a virtual constructor. So this was virtual functions. Now moving on to the next question which is what are DML statements? So DML is also known as data manipulation language. These statements are used to manipulate the database objects inside the database. Following are included in DML. First is insert, second is delete and third is update. Now coming to the next question which is what are DDL statements? So DDL is also known as data definition language. So these statements are used to define or modify objects in database and following are included in DDL that is create, alter, drop, truncate. So now moving on to the next question which is what is SQL? So SQL is known as structured query language. It is the language used to manipulate the database. SQL includes various categories like DDL, DML and TCL. Now coming to the next question that is we have to write a program to find the power of a number. You can have a look at this example. This type of questions are also asked during the interview process. So in this example we are taking two inputs n and base. Then we are taking a while loop which validates if n is equal to 0. In loop we are taking the product of result and base till n equals to 0. For example if n equals to 5 and base equals to 2 then we will multiply 2 5 times that is 32. So this is how you can solve this problem. Now moving on to the next coding problem which is write a code to reverse a number in Java. You can have a look at this example first. So in this example we are taking n as an input and a while loop which is validating if n more than 0. In while loop we are first finding last digit of 1. So then we are using that last digit and adding it to a product of 10 and sum. The sum is storing the digits of reversed n. Finally, we are deducting the last digit from the number n by dividing n by 10. For example, if n equals to 12, then r equals to 2, then sum would be 0 into 10 plus 2, which is equal to 2, and n equals to 1. Then again, when r equals to 1, sum equals to 2 into 10 plus 1, which is equal to 21. That is the reverse number. So this is how we can reverse a number. So as we have covered the technical interview questions, now let's understand cognizant objective interview questions. So our first question is, a 300 meter long train running at the speed of 150 km per hour crosses the second train running in the opposite direction with the speed of 120 km per hour in 9 seconds. What is the length of the second train? Option A is 370 meter. Option B is 400 meter, option C is 375 meter and option D is 372 meter. You can take some time to solve this question. You can also pause this video in order to figure out the correct option. Meanwhile, we will discuss the correct option. So the correct option is C 375 meters. So the train is running in the opposite direction. Then the total speed would be 150 plus 120 which is equal to 270 km per hour. And if we will convert it into meter per second then it becomes 75 meter per second. 
Now let the length of another train be L meter. Now 300 plus L that is the length of the other train divided by 9 equals to 75 meter. So this becomes distance upon time equals to speed that is 300 plus L divided by 9 equals to 75. Now 75 is the speed that is 75 meter per second. Now by solving this equation L that is the length comes out to be 375 meter. Alright now moving on to the next question which is assume Ax equals to By then option A log A by log B equals to X by Y. Option B is log a by B equals to X by Y. Option C is log A divided by log B equals to Y by X. Option D is log B divided by A equals to X Y. Now you can again pause this video to figure out the correct option. Meanwhile, we can go ahead with the right option. So the correct option is C that is log A divided by log B equals to Y by X. Now moving on to the next question which is sum of two numbers is 80 and their product is 320. Then what is the sum of their reciprocals? It is a very basic question. Option A is 1, option B is 2, option C is 1 by 4 and option D is 1 by 2. Now you can take your time by pausing this video. Meanwhile the correct option is option D 1 by 4. So given a plus b equals to 80, that is the sum of two numbers equals to 80 and a into b that is product of two numbers is 320. Then sum of their reciprocals as we know the formula that the sum of their reciprocals is equal to a plus b divided by a into b that is equal to a plus b that is the sum divided by the product which comes out to be 80 divided by 320 that comes out to be 1 by 4. So 1 by 4 is the correct option that is an option D. Alright guys now moving on to the next question. So our next question is how many seconds will a 300 meter long train moving with a speed of 83 km per hour take to cross a man walking at a speed of 3 km per hour in the direction of the train. So our option A is 13.5 seconds, option B is 14 seconds, option C is 13 seconds or option D 14.5 seconds. So you can pause this video again and try to solve this question on your own. Meanwhile, I'll speak the right option now. So the correct option is A 13.5 seconds. So the train and man are moving in the same direction. So the relative speed will be 83 minus 3 which is equal to 80 km per hour. Now we know that we have to convert it into meter per second. So we'll convert 80 km per hour into meter per second by multiplying it with 5 by 18 which comes out to be 200 by 9 meter per second. And we know that time equals to distance upon speed. So our distance is 300 and our speed is 200 by 9. So we will divide 300 by 200 by 9 and our answer would be 13.5 seconds. So yes the correct option is 13.5 seconds. That is option A. Now. Moving on to the next question. So a set sum of money amounts rupees 3000 in 2 years and rupees 3400 in 4 years. Find the sum and the rate of interest. So our option A is INR 2000 and 13%. Here 2000 is the sum and rate of interest is 13%. Option B is 2600 and 7.7%. .7%. Option C is 1500 and 12.5% 12 and option D is 1600 and 12%. Now I'm going to tell the correct option. So the correct option is option B that is 2600 and 7.7%. .7 so the interest paid in two years would be 3400 minus 3000 which is 400 for two years. Now so for one year we will divide 400 by 2. So it comes out to be 200. Then for 2 years it would be 400. For 1 year it would be 200. 
Then the principal sum at the beginning is 3000 minus 400. That is 400 for two years. So we'll uh, subtract 3000 minus 400, which comes out to be 2600. So 2600 is the principal sum at the beginning. Now, if we apply the formula of rate of simple interest, that is 200 divided by 2600, that is the sum at the beginning into 100, then it comes out to be 7.7%. So the correct option is option B, 2607.7%. Now, moving on to the next question. What is the antonym of vindictive? So you can select from these options, option A, careless, option B, forgiving, option C, revengeful, option D, refined. So the correct option is option B, that is forgiving. Now moving on to the next question, what is the antonym of peculiar? Option A is normal, option B is exception, option C is unique and option D is specific. Now again I am going to speak the correct option. So the correct option is option A normal. Now again next question, what is the antonym of prejudice? Option A, bias. Option B, injustice. Option C, impartial. Option D, judge. The correct option of this question is option C, impartial. So these are some antonyms that you can prepare or some more antonyms or synonyms that you can prepare on your own. Now, moving on to the next question. Odometer is to mileage, then compass is to, you have to select from distance, B direction, C speed or option D gravity. Now the correct option is option B direction. Odometer is to mileage, then compass is to direction. Alright, now again we will move to the similar question like that. Now marathon is to race, then hibernation is to option A sleep, option B awake, option C dream or option D animal. Now the correct option is option A that is sleep. Marathon is to race, then hibernation is to sleep. They are pretty easy questions. Next question is window is to pain, then book is to Option A, page. Option B, cover. Option C, author. Option D, ink. Correct option here is option A, page. Now, the next question. Cup is to coffee. Then bowl is to A, water. B, noodles. C, bread. Or D, soup. Correct option here is D, soup. Now cup is to coffee, then bowl is to soup. It was pretty easy. Now moving on to the next question. Vikas plants six separate saplings A, B, C, D, E, F in rows number one to six. According to the following conditions, he must plant A before B and E. He must plant B and D. The third has to be C. Which sitting arrangement is acceptable? Now, these type of questions doesn't really need any explanation. So, here are the options. Option A, A, F, C, B, E, D. This is the arrangement. Option B, A, B, D, E, C, F arrangement. Option C, D, B, A, C, F, E arrangement. Or option D, C, E, F, B, A, D arrangement. So, you have to select the correct option among these and now I'm going to tell you the correct option which is option A that is A F C B E D so this is the correct option now we can move to the next question which is when Rahul saw Aditya he recalled he is the son of the father of my daughter who is Rahul option A brother option B cousin Option C, father-in-law, or option D, brother-in-law. 
take your time by pausing this video. Now I'm going to tell the correct option. So the correct option is option D that is brother in law. Next question is which of the following is synonym of catechize? Option A query, option B silence, option C walk away, or option D sing. So the correct option of this question would be option A query. Now moving on to the next question. So which of the following is synonym of loot? Option A love, option B play, option C hate or option D dance. So the correct option is option C that is hate. Now the next question would be which of the following is synonym of recede? Option A attack, option B retreat, option C dodge or option D complain. Now the correct option of this question is option B retreat. Alright, now moving on to the next question. So which of the following is the synonym of spurious? Option A real, option B genuine, option C fake or option D excellent. So the correct option of this question would be option C fake. Now again a similar type of question. Which of the following is synonym of Padji? Option A chubby, option B skinny, option C ugly or option D beautiful. And the correct option of this question would be option A chubby. Alright now the next question would be if Vijay can be written as XKLCA, then what can RCTKU be written as? So you need to solve this question with pen and paper, then only you can figure out the correct option. So the options are A. Paris, B. Param, C. Pairs, D. Plans. Now I'm going to tell you the correct option. So the correct option would be option A that is Paris. Now the next question would be after walking 11 kilometers towards south a man turns right. He walks 2 kilometers to the left and 7 kilometers to the right. After that he walks 3 kilometers straight back. Where is his starting point now? So again you have to do this question with pen and paper. So option A is southwest, option B is south, option C is northwest, option D north. And correct option of this question would be option D that is north. Now coming to the next question, consider some digits between 10 and 1000 such that when each number is divided by 6, 7 and 11 it leaves 5 as the remainder in each case. What are the original numbers? Option A 535, Option B 400, Option C 462, or Option D 135. So the correct option of this question would be Option C that is 462. Now moving on to the next question. In the 800 meter race, A gives B a start of 5 seconds and beats him by 25 seconds. In another race, A beats B by 15 seconds. The speeds are in the ratio. So the ratios are option A 10 ratio 11, option B 9 ratio 8, option C 8 ratio 9 or option D 8 ratio 8. So this one is pretty easy question and now I'm going to tell the correct option. So the correct option would be option B that is 9 ratio 8. Now moving on to the next question. If 1 raised to power 3 plus 2 raised to power 3 plus 3 raised to power 3 up to so on 10 raised to power 3 equals to 4050 then find the value of 
टू रेज टू पार थ्री प्लस फोर रेज टू पार थ्री प्लस सिक्स रेज टू पार थ्री अप टू सो ऑन ट्वेंटी रेज टू पार थ्री सो हेयर आर आर ऑप्शन लाइक ए टेन थाउजेंड बी थर्टी टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड ऑप्शन सी फोर्टी टू थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड फिफ्टी और ऑप्शन डी थर्टी टू थाउजेंड नाउ आई एम गोन स्पीक द करेक्ट ऑप्शन सो द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज थर्टी टू थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड so we have given that 1 raised to power 3 plus 2 raised to power 3 plus 3 raised to power 3 up to so on 10 raised to power 3 equals to 4050 so we have given the value of these now we have to find the value of 2 raised to power 3 plus 4 raised to power 3 up to so on 20 raised to power 3 so first of all we'll take the common so we'll take 2 raised to power 3 common out of these so it would be like 2 raised to power 3 in the bracket there would be 1 raised to power 3 plus 2 raised to power 2 3 plus 3 raised to power 3 up to so on 103 10 raised to power 3 all right so we know that 2 raised to power 3 is equal to 8 now and the rest of it we have the value like 4050 so we will simply multiply 4050 into 8 then it comes out to be 32400 You can try this question on your own. It is pretty easy. All right. Now moving on to the next question. That what will be the most significant number which divides thirty-seven, fifty-nine, seventy-four, leaving the remainder two, three, and four respectively? Option A would be seven. Option B would be nine. Option C ten, and option D five. now i'm going to tell the correct option so the right option would be option a 7 so these were some cognizant objective interview questions now coming to the hr questions for freshers so those that make it through the technical round will advance to the final round which is the cognizant hr interview candidates will have to face interaction with cognizant hr manager in the stage during the hr stage candidates may also be interviewed by a panel more than uh, in which there are more than one interviewer so participants will be asked things about their personal history academic qualifications interest strengths weaknesses professional experience and so on finally if candidates are chosen in the in this round they will now be recruited for the job description for which they have applied All right now let's move on to the questions part so the first question which is also very common would be tell us a bit about yourself so this topic is typically asked to initiate a conversation and to gain a basic understanding of the candidate candidates typically begin with their current academic qualifications technologies learned family history projects completed in the final academic semesters internship programs completed and in what role uh, the internships are etc now to answer confidently to make the best impression on the interview the manner in which you conclude your answer can set the tone for the next few questions now let's move on to the next question so how do you increase your knowledge so this is an important question so you need to prepare for this question so you can answer like learning does not come to an end ever like the interviewer will want to know if you are a critical thinker who challenges yourself to grow you can respond to this question by saying that you are aware of current it trends and that your knowledge will not only help you advance in your career but will also be beneficial to the company's growth all right so this is how you can address this question now moving on to the next question so what are your qualifications so you must serve an example how you differ from the other candidates tell them about your abilities that will help you to make a beneficial influence at work operating in a new environment is not really a problem for you and you can say a lot of similar things like that check that you match the job description and explain how you believe you could be a good fit based on your strengths all right so this is how you can answer this question now we can move to the next question which is assuming you are employed how long do you anticipate working for us all right so no employer wants an interviewee who will leave the company after only a few years 
so they anticipate that the candidates will be a good fit for the company for like 7 to 8 years and even if you are unsure you must tell them that as long as the job you do challenges and leads to a profitable company it will help you grow so in this way you can answer these types of questions now the next question why do you believe you are qualified for this position so now remember why you applied for this specific role when answering this question tell the interviewer about your qualifications and how uh, they make you eligible for this position in addition emphasize uh, how you can add value to their current workforce all right now tell us about some of your strengths this is again a very common and important questions so again it's uh, critical to research the job requirements before attending the interview make a list of your areas of strength and say the ones which this role requires all right now the next question would be tell us a little about your weaknesses all right so do not give a weak point that will directly impact your selection but also do not claim that you don't even have a weakness so the best way to respond to this question is to flip one of your strengths into a shortcoming but you believe it is an important to function in this way another option for answering this question is to provide a totally unrelated weakness that is that will not affect your work in the company all right now moving on to the next question that would be what do you like to do in your spare time aside from study all right so candidates must respond to this question by discussing their hobbies or extracurricular activities like just don't say that outright that you enjoy reading books watching television and playing sports since the interviewer will ask you what genre you love to read and why as well as the technicalities of the sport so ensure you answer this question honestly and only if you have such a knack for doing so in your spare time so these were some cognizant hr interview questions now let's understand how to prepare for these hr interview questions all right so to prepare for these hr interview questions you must participate regularly before actually taking the test make sure you have a good comprehension of the topic and enough practice reading good literature or registering for a suitable online course can help you clear your doubts now the second point would be make sure you review your coding test papers and practice programming principles like c c++ and java as well as other computer essentials like oops concept and databases and networking and the third point would be ensure all the information on your cv concerning uh, your prior projects and internships is correct and that you understand everything you will be questioned on your past projects and work experience as well as what technology you used and what you have achieved so our fourth point would be ensure that you are updated on the technological developments you should be familiar with the recent technology advancements etc so you must be updated with the latest trends in technology as well so these were some tips to prepare for the cognizant hr interview questions now let's have a look at cognizant careers so the cognizant recruitment takes place for freshers and experienced candidates so cts turns recruitment for the following positions so first would be gen c then gen c elevate then gen c pro and gen c next so these were some following positions that ct runs recruitment for all right cognizant recruitment is quite rigorous like it is one of the fortune 500 companies and a great place to work Cognizant is an excellent place to start your career if you're a fresher. Even for experienced candidates, Cognizant is good paymaster and has a terrific projects that can elevate your career. And following are the CT's recruitment eligibility criteria, like more than sixty percent marks in tenth and twelfth or diploma, a minimum of sixty percent marks in graduation, a maximum interval of one year is permitted. and graduation and post graduation in be that is bachelor of engineering b tech me m tech and mca a candidate should not have any pending backlogs during the recruitment so these were some eligibility criteria that you need to take care of 
And with that, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.